In this section of the tutorial, we're going to continue to create all the basic shapes that we're going to need for our portrait model. We're going to start with the file Two Portrait Base Shapes, which is what we saved at the end of the first tutorial, showing you how to create the shapes for the basic face, nose, ears, mouth, and the detail shapes for the face and the neck. If we look at the 3D view, we can see the stage we're at with those shapes when we open this file. I'm going to go ahead and switch off all these layers and come to the next layer that we've got here which is the eyes and make sure that's selected hide the layer manager come up to view tile the windows vertically let's come to the modeling tab let's hide all the components and we'll go ahead and start to create the shapes for the eyes now even though I've called this eyes what I really mean is the surrounding area of the eyes I'm going to model the eyeballs later when we come to actually punch out the eye shapes and that I consider to be more of a um, an advanced modeling technique so that we're not covering it during the basic shapes. It's something that we do after we've got all the other shapes adjusted and we've started to do some basic sculpting. So for these eye shapes these are quite straightforward. Essentially based on the image um, we drew these so we can see what we've got happening here and for the lower level of these shapes We've got these ones, and so I'm going to grab all those and include this one in it here. I'm going to come to Create Shape from Vectors. We're going to call this I Surround, back to 90 degrees, 0.1, hit Apply, see how they look. 0.1 is quite uh, high for small shapes like this, so that's when I'll come and back this off so we'll go 0 0.04 and then I'm going to keep that component active I'm going to select these top shapes that we've got here make these 90 degrees we'll scale these to a height of 0 0.03 and hit add to add those to combine with the current shape again if I look at those and decide they're a little high then I can always come in and back off those heights a little and we're going to come in later and make adjustments to these anyway when we come to actually do the sculpting. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to switch off the ice around, come back to the drawing tab, switch off that layer. We'll go ahead and switch on and select the hair layer. Hit F to fit that in the 2D view and we'll model the uh, components we need for the hair. Back to the modeling tab. I'm going to create shape from vectors. I'm going to select the outline here, say 90 degrees, and I'm going to call this main hair, and I'm going to put in a fairly low height for such a large area and hit apply. Now, I'm going to create this, these two parts of the hair as separate shapes, because I may want to edit this back part of the hair differently, as it's essentially on a different plane that's behind the ear and behind the neck, whereas this part of the hair is in front of the um, part of the head, and I'm probably going to want to manipulate that differently to this one. So we'll keep these as separate components. So I go ahead and hit Start New Component, select this back one, make that round, and we'll go quite a low height, apply, and we can set that to merge because I know it's going to be merged into the background part of the model. So if we hit close, that's the hair. Next we can come back to the drawing tab. We'll go ahead and select the close layer, switch that on, make sure it's current. We can switch off the hair layer, hide that. And now we're going to go ahead and model the components for the clothes. What I need to do is look at the clothes and decide effectively how many planes they exist on, how many three-dimensional planes there are within this, and then I'm probably going to want those as separate components so that I can manipulate them individually. So first we have the um, piece of clothing which goes around the hair. Next I have the kind of front shoulder and collar. Then we have the frilly part in the middle, the ruff, and then effectively we've got the back shoulder here as well. So what I'm going to do is start with the part for the hair. So we'll just select that and we'll make it round 90 degrees and keep that 0 0.1. Hit apply and we'll call this hair surround. Then I want in the same component these little pieces here. So I'm going to make those 
90 degrees. I want them to merge with the current shape. So with that selected, I hit apply. If I decide that shape's a little much, I can just back off the value, hit space, and dynamically see that update until I'm happy with it. If it's still too much, back it off, and then I'm happy with the way that looks. Next, I'm gonna say start new component, and we'll call this clothes. Um, actually, we, well, we're gonna select work with the front shoulder here. So we'll start with this area here, and we'll call this whole area front shoulder. So with this vector selected here, I'm going to say 90 degree and I'm going to hit apply. And that we can see is adding onto the other component that we've got there. It doesn't really matter, but we can set that to merge if we want. And don't worry about these depths and heights. We're going to adjust all that in a later stage. So this is the base part of the coat. Then I've got a fold in the image which comes in front of that. So I'm going to take this 90 degree 0 0.05 and add that to the same component that we're currently working in. Next, I'm going to take the collar, and for the collar, I just want to flip this up. So I'm going to take the same rounded shape that I've got for the um, shoulder here, or for, for, for the coat, and I'm just going to take a flat height, but I'm going to say that I want to tilt it, set the anchor on the inside, and come to the outside, and the default 10 degrees is very, very high. I do want that set to merge, uh, sorry, to add. So I'm going to add that on to what I've got there already. And we're going to just back that off a little till it just sticks out a little bit for me. There's the collar. Next, I'm going to select the button. And this, again, I may just take a flat shape and just build that up 0 0.02. Again, making sure I have this set to add. So if that's not high enough, I put in a new value. And then we can see how that's going to look. Okay, so we can keep increasing that until we're happy with the way it looks. Next, I'm going to say start new component. So we'll leave that in place. We don't really need to undraw it at the moment. And here for the frilly part of the shirt, I saw earlier when I generated my test texture component that there's a lot of detail in that area um, from the original image. So I'm going to use that to give me all the, the kind of frilly shape that this has. So all I want really here is a simple rounded shape that's almost going to act as a three-dimensional placeholder. So I'm going to say 90 degrees, scale to height 0 0.05, hit apply, and we'll call that rough because it's that's uh, the name of the frilly part on the shirt here. Say so start new component, and now we're going to work on the back shoulder. So I have this, which is the furthest part back, which I'm going to say 90 degrees, scale to height 0 0.05. We can change the name of this to back shoulder. And then I'm, this part here, which is going to be in front of that, I'm going to make round 90 degrees, 0 0.1, and merge that in with the part of the component I've already created there. Now in this case, again, what I've got here, if I look at the image, is actually part of the collar. So I may want to make this a little flatter. So I'll put in 0 0.04 and then use the tilt function again. Set the anchor here and here. So that's where I need to think about tilting this up. I may even want to go from this kind of back edge to the front edge like that. 10 degrees, again, very, very high default angle. So I'm just going to back that off to something like 2.4 um, and or something around there, and that looks good to me. So if I close that, we maximize the 3D view. We can see we're starting to get to the point now. We show all the components that we've got pretty much all the basic shapes we need modeled, and we're ready to start adding, um, or, or we're ready to start doing the detail work on these. So that pretty much concludes the basic shape modeling, uh, which was split over two tutorials. In the first tutorial, you saw us model all the basic shapes around the, the face, the nose, the mouth, the ear. In this tutorial, you saw us model the areas around the eyes, the hair shape, and then we've gone through and created several components for the clothes. At the end of this basic modeling stage, you should have something that looks similar to the image you see on the screen. 
This should have a rough resemblance to the image you're working with, but is going to be nowhere close to a finished part. Very much at this point in time, you've just tried to create the underlying shapes. Over the course of the next two tutorials, what we're going to start to do is edit these shapes, and that's going to require a combination of adjusting their tilt, fade, and base height, and potentially their order in the component tree and their combined mode so that they start to have the right relationship with the shapes that they're going to be near or overlap or need to sit on top of. Also during that editing stage you're going to see us start to do the sculpting on individual layers and start to blend some of the shapes on those layers and start to get rid of some of these harsh transitional shapes we've got where we need to have a softer transition. So in order to finish this particular stage we'll go ahead and say file and save as and we'll save this as three portrait base shapes two so we have two portrait base shapes for the first one three portrait base shapes two and that's the end of this stage and if you wanted to open that you could take a look at that and see how the file looked in Aspire